Hi, good afternoon and welcome everybody. My name is Hannah Gilkinson. I'm one of the directors here at National Geographic Student Travel. And we are excited to have you all with us to learn more about our programs that we're offering for summer 2023. Shortly later in the webinar, we'll be hearing from Dr. Tierney Thies, a biologist, filmmaker, and National Geographic explorer who's going to be joining one of our Baja programs this summer. And she's joined us around the world on many student travel programs over the past several years. But before turning it over to Tierney, I just wanted to offer a brief overview of the National Geographic student travel programs, share some information about the explorers and trip leaders who students will be learning from this summer, and just speak quickly about the application process. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have, so please do feel free to put any questions you have in the Q&A box, which is down at the bottom of your screen on the Zoom window, and we'll address them at the end. So um, anything that pops up, put it in there. We might address it during the presentation, but if not, we'll get to it um, at the end of the of the chat. So um, please do also know that we're going to be recording this, and we'll send it out to you if you'd like to share it with um, your family, review it, or share it with anybody else. So we'll get that out to you um, once we're all done. All right, so these programs are unique as they allow students to explore and learn while connecting to the missions of the National Geographic Society. They provide an opportunity for students who are drawn together by a shared interest, a shared curiosity or passion to get out into the field with National Geographic explorers and their amazing trip leaders. To delve into their surroundings and learn skills that are used by explorers in the field, such as photography, science and engineering, and storytelling, as they work to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. The hope is that students return home with an explorer mindset, ready to observe and to engage in the world around them, and with a real sense of responsibility and respect for other people, cultures, and the natural world. These programs are designed to be a unique learning opportunity and to create a community of future explorers, but they're also designed to be a lot of fun and an incredible group experience. They bring together students who share a curiosity for the world, and I've been fortunate enough to be a trip leader on these programs in the past, and the bonds and connections that students make during just a few short weeks is truly remarkable and special to see. On the program, students will find role models in their National Geographic explorers and in their trip leaders who are all accomplished and inspiring photographers, writers, scientists, and educators, as well as the local experts and organizations that we meet with along the way. One goal of these programs is to empower students with the skills and the tool sets to become leaders in their communities. And that is certainly something we see as noted in this quote from one of our longtime experts, M. Jackson. So I wanna quickly provide an overview of the different destinations that we're offering for 2023, as well as the different program types, which are exploration, university workshops, and photo workshops. On exploration programs, which I'll cover a bit more in depth in a minute, um, they're in Baja, Canadian Arctic, Ecuador and the Galapagos, Iceland, Namibia, Norway, and Thailand. Our photo and film workshops are in Tokyo and Yellowstone, and our university workshop is on the campus of MIT. So all of these programs are designed for students who can come from anywhere in the world, but are completing ninth through 12th grade or the equivalent. Um, but we do consider applications from current eighth graders who are excited to engage with the themes of the program. So if this does describe you, we encourage you to give us a call and we'd be happy to chat about um, our programs. Regardless of the program that they join, all students are working towards a final project. So this could be a photo gallery or a presentation of best images by photography students. It could be a short written piece or a field journal presentation by wildlife conservation students. Students at MIT might come up with a proposal for how the technology they've been learning about can solve a problem in their home community. So it's really a chance to get creative. They're not meant to be high pressure events, um, but rather a chance for students to dive into a question they hope to answer and then share that back with the rest of the group and then friends and family back home. So I'm gonna quickly go over the different program types that we have. Um, the exploration program is our biggest category. We have seven destinations. Um, these are all smaller group traveling programs, generally 16 to 24 students and two to three leaders plus the National Geographic Explorer. Each exploration pro program offers what we call on assignments. Um, and when students apply for an exploration program, they'll pick a specific on assignment focus and they use that as a lens through which they explore the destination. These on assignment projects include photography, climate and geology, wildlife and conservation, marine and tropical biology, and anthropology, culture, and tradition. Each itinerary has been crafted to maximize learning and engagement with the on assignment themes throughout the program. 
Each on assignment has its own trip leader dedicated to teaching and working with students on their projects. So students can expect to spend a part of their day with their on assignment group and part of the day participating in whole group activities. For example, in Namibia, the morning might start with the photo group heading out to practice portraiture or landscape photography. The wildlife group conducts game counts and does collar tracking exercises with some of the wildlife ecologists we work with. They then might reconvene in the afternoon for a whole group walk in the bush with trackers looking for signs of rhino and leopard. So you get both that small group experience with your on assignment group and then a larger group experience throughout the day. So this year um, we have one university workshop um, which is based on the campus of MIT and it focuses on technology, engineering and robotics. Um, this is a much larger program than the exploration programs. It could be 50 students, 40 to 50 students, and six to eight leaders, plus two explorers, including Skylar Tibbetts, who's our expert for this year. He's founder and co-director of MIT's Self-Assembly Lab. And so on this program, we visit labs, museums, and maker spaces as we look how researchers at MIT are finding innovative ways to use technology to address issues impacting the world. And then students are challenged to consider issues in their own communities and taking what they've learned and discussed during the program, develop a final project that help, could, could help address these problems. The last category is the photography and film workshops. So these are intensive workshops where students get out into the field daily on assignment with their trip leaders and expert, learning everything from technique and storytelling with an emphasis on editing as well. These programs have a final gallery opening of images and screening of final films, which is something that's open to friends and family who are able to come as well as to the public. So a real chance for students to celebrate and show off their work. Um, on the Yellowstone Photo Workshop, all students will be learning about photo. And in Tokyo, students can choose either photography or filmmaking. Um, for all these programs, it's really important to know that no formal experience is necessary, just a real curiosity, a desire to learn and to explore. Um, and the instructors will work with each student at whatever level they join us at. Um, on that note, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, trip leaders. So our trip leaders are incredibly accomplished, dynamic individuals who love working with students. They are with the group for 24-7 for the duration of the program start to finish, and they oversee everything from health and safety to group dynamics, and they teach because they're also well established in their fields. So this slide right here has a few of our, our leaders, and I do encourage you to go to our website to learn more about them, to, to read their bios, and to um, read in general more about both our experts and our leaders. So here we've got um, Alex Basaraba. Alex is a climate change resilience specialist and a freelance photographer and author. He has extensive, ex extensive experience working in science-informed storytelling and youth empowerment. Um, Alex has been with us for the past five years, leading programs in Nepal, Iceland, and in Cambridge. Alex Silva is an educator who's taught students ranging from middle school to college, and she just recently returned back to Chicago after six years teaching conservation courses in the Virgin Islands. Alex has been leading programs since 2009 all around the globe. Jamel Holden is a very accomplished photographer, director, and filmmaker who's produced content for a number of Grammy award-winning artists, including John Legend, Quincy Jones, and Enrique Iglesias, to name a few, as well as the produced highly acclaimed feature films in the travel docu-series Black Girl Chronicles. Erica is an educator and photographer who has numerous exhibitions of her landscape and portraiture photography, and Himraj is an outdoor journalist, photographer, and adventurer who covers travel, conservation issues, extreme sports, and climate change, to name just a few things. He's been widely published and has led programs around the world with us since 2013. On our experts, um, we're excited to have an NGS Explorer join each program. So NGS Explorers, as I mentioned previously, are change makers, innovators, individuals who've been recognized for doing exceptional work in their fields. Nat Geo Explorers are curious, driven individuals who push the limit of what we know and they strive to know more about our planet. Every program has an explorer or what we also refer to as the expert joined for three to six days with the exception of the photography and film workshops for which the expert joins the entire time. This page right here just shows a sample of the explorers who will be joining us this summer. Salome is a marine ecologist working at the Charles Darwin um, Foundation in the Galapagos, supporting management of the Galapagos Marine Reserve, and she's been with us for a number of summers. Tierney, who we'll hear from in a moment, is um, a biologist, filmmaker, and world expert on the giant ocean sunfish. M. Jackson is a glaciologist and TED fellow who spent um, years studying some of the world's most remote Arctic environments. Florian is a big cat researcher working to reduce predator conflicts in Namibia and Botswana, and Sheen is a Thai photojournalist and marine biologist who specializes in marine conservation stories. So before I turn it over to Tierney in just a moment, I just want to share a little bit about our Baja in the Gulf of California program, which Tierney has joined in the past and will be joining again this year. 
So the Baja program was created by one of our program directors, Mike Oster, who is a marine scientist who has spent a significant amount of time exploring um, southern Baja. And the Gulf of California is a spectacular place for wildlife enthusiasts who want to learn more about ocean conservation, perfect for students interested in and curious about marine biology, and um, it's one of the most productive ocean ecosystems. So we have opportunities in Baja to learn about the megafauna, see whales, dolphins, sea lions, whale sharks, rays, and fish as we get out on or in the water each day. And students monitor reef and the reef and participate in all sorts of interesting marine conservation work while we're there. And they have the opportunity to explore the terrestrial landscape as well. So on this program, students will choose either photography or marine and tropical biology as their focus. So during part of the program, Dr. Tierney Thies is a biologist and filmmaker, as I said previously, she joins to bring a bit of her passion and knowledge to the program. So I would like to turn it over to her to hear a little bit more about her passion and background and why she loves to spend part of her summer with our students. So I am excited to introduce Tierney. Welcome. Oh, well, um, thank you so much. Now, um, let's see, I'm on my phone, but you can see me and, and everything's good. Can see you, okay. can hear you, great. <laughs> yes. Great, great to see everybody. Um, great to be here and thanks so much for the invite. I like nothing more than to talk about Baja, um, which is where I'll be joining um, students this, this summer. One of my favorite places on the planet. I have a long history going there um, with my family back when I was little. And it is truly one of the most amazing places on the planet where we have just dozens of species of cetaceans, all manner of fishes. It's one of the best examples of getting marine conservation right. There's a, there's a marine protected area down in the southern part of Baja called Cabo Pumo, where people have, um, the, the, the local fishermen have taken it upon themselves to protect those waters. And over the course of 10 years, have measured a 467% increase in biomass. And so it's just a, a terrific place to, to be able to showcase some of the conservation work that, that um, is going on and conservation successes. So um, beautiful time in, in the water, lots of snorkeling. And uh, yeah, it's certainly one of, my, one of my favorite places on the planet. I, I've been doing National Geographic student expeditions since, I guess, since 2007. And it's, it's really one of the most rewarding experiences, getting to know the students. Many times I've written um, recommendations for their, their colleges, and then they've gone on to get PhDs. And it's just been, it's been um, so rewarding to see you know, some, sometimes we'll get students who they're pretty shy the first day. And then over the course of the, of the expedition, they have made lifelong friends and completely transformed. In Baja, we get the chance to, you know, practice our Spanish, eat amazingly cooked homemade um, Mexican food. We explore the desert. We're underwater. We can go scuba diving if you're certified. Um, working with with local groups, uh, it's um, and for me personally, you see this picture here. Um, this is my research study animal. I became enamored with them because they're just such a goofy, goofy shaped animal, and um, they weren't really found so much in the Gulf of California, but. Since I started doing the expeditions, I started talking to more of the local biologists and hearing about the fact that there were sunfish down there. And now it's, uh, it's really interesting because right off Baja, there's this pod of orca that have been bringing sunfish to the surface and playing with them like toys. So this is this has actually resulted in a whole new research phase where I'm, I'm working with um, local marine biologist from um, the university in, in La Paz and we're writing a series of manuscripts on the orca sunfish interactions so that's going to be a really fun thing to share with students how we write up that that research how we do that research and um, so that's been a really interesting development just over the last couple of years where I've been um, accompanying you know doing the Baja expeditions so but there's also um, another aspect of research that I, I do a, a bunch of different things. One of them, the others, is um, I have a really, really passionate interest in reducing plastic pollution 
in the ocean. And so I co-founded a nonprofit called Around the World in 80 Fabrics. And we celebrate the immense and exciting biodiversity of natural fibers all over the world and how they're a win-win for, the, for agriculture, for social justice, for um, elevating the voices of makers. And, um, and it's been, it's, that has been a really, a really interesting and fun expedition there where we're tying in how fashion can be this great force for good. So I'll probably, I'll bring a selection of, of these um, fibers with us, with me to the expedition. Um, and, you know, there's, there's lots of, um, there's another, there's, I've been, um, I've gotten about 10 grants from the National Geographic Society to work on all manner of different things, the sunfish, the plastic pollution, as well as looking how the brain responds to nature imagery um, and working with, with um, nature deprived populations like in solitary confinement. So lots to talk about with students, lots to, um, to engage with. And, um, and it's, yep, it's, it's a really, really amazing time to be with them in the summer. That's great. Um, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> and I see you're, you're traveling right now, it seems. <laughs> I am. I'm sorry that I have my, I'm in a car. I um, actually okay. just, just returned from the Azores um, last night. So I've been over there for the past couple of weeks, exploring all those islands over there, which have an incredible history with, with whaling, but now are, are, have transformed that, that, um, the fact that so many whales come to the Azores into not, you know, just ecotourism instead of, instead yeah. of whaling. So. Well, we'd love to yeah. join you on a trip to the Azores sometime. <laughs> oh, please do. It's a great, it's a great place. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, I, um, I so appreciate you coming in and chatting with us and sharing a little bit. And we are so excited. And I know your students are going to be incredibly lucky to be with you this summer in Baja. So um, we're looking forward to the summer already. And um, I'll, we'll let you go so you can get on with your travels. But if anyone has any other questions for Tierney or questions in general, you can put them in the Q&A. And um, we'd love to, to, to get back to you with some answers on that. So thank you so much, Tierney. And um, appreciate you hopping in. Yes, and I hope to see, I hope, I'm looking forward to seeing people down south of the border. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, safe travels. You know, Tierney is just an example of one of our amazing um, experts that you could be working with this summer. So um, yeah, again, please let us know if you have any questions, drop them down in the chat. I just wanted to really um, quickly hop in and talk about our application process. So um, our office, the phone number um, will be on, on the following slide, but you can give us a call anytime to talk about any of our programs. You can speak with the director of the program that you're interested in. We can walk you through each itinerary, answer any questions. We do have a lot of students that say, I can't choose, or I don't know if I wanna do wildlife or photography. And we would love to chat with you and help you find the program that's the right fit for you. So um, please do give us a call. Our application is very simple. It's an on, um, online application that we accept on a rolling admissions basis. So we are accepting applications now until programs are full. Um, basic information on the online application. It will ask you at the end of the uh, application to submit a deposit that holds your space in your program um, choice and uh, the on assignment of your choice um, while you get the next pieces together. And we just ask for a short personal statement. We want to know why you're excited to travel with us, why you picked that program, um, you know, why you're choosing to travel with National Geographic. And we'll ask you for two email addresses for teachers, educators, uh, you know, mentors, coaches, people that can really provide a reference for how you um, would be on a program such as this, working with your peers, you know, getting outside your comfort zone, learning, engaging. Um, so we'll ask for those email addresses for those two teacher references. Um, and that's all we need in an assigned agreement form. And then um, that's what we need to uh, to review your application, and we'll get back to you right away once we have all the materials. Um, you will have access to what's called a digital locker from the moment you start your application and through until the summer. The digital locker is kind of a one-stop shopping um, 
a place to get all your information. It's where you'll, you know, submit your personal statement, but it's also where you will get your packing list. You will um, read the information about your leaders and your experts. You'll get your itinerary um, information on the summer blog that we keep during the summer so that parents and family can follow along with the journey. Um, so that's going to be a, a great resource for you during the summer, but again, I mean, during the spring, but again, we are here 24 um seven to five days a week to answer any questions that you have. We're here 24 seven during the summer, but not, not in the springtime. Um, so please do give us a call and I guess I'll turn it over now to see if there's any questions that popped up that, um, that I could answer before we sign off for the day. Excellent. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting some great questions. My name's Mike, I'm one of Hannah's colleagues. Uh, so there were a couple of questions about scholarship availability for any of our programs? We do have a scholarship um, program and the application is live on our website. Um, I would encourage you to go and look at it soon. It does, it is open until February 24th or until we have 300 complete scholarship applications. So um, it's a, a also an online application form, very similar in structure. Um, we do ask that everybody in addition to the general application. Also, just let us know why they um, are looking to have a scholarship to travel with us this summer, but please do um, check that out and uh, and consider that. Excellent. What about travel arrangements for our programs? So we have um, our leaders who I mentioned before, they will be traveling with students from um, departure of you know, if it's an international program from a what we call a gateway city here in the United States, New York, or, or um, you know, Miami, they'll be traveling with students to the international destination. So we actually arrange a group flight, um, and then families can purchase that that ticket directly through us, so that the group is all traveling together with one of their leaders on both legs. Excellent. And uh, maybe two questions in one, uh, how rigorous is the application process and how many, uh, what's the typical acceptance rate of applicants on our programs? Sure, yeah. So, I mean, I, the, the application is um, re relatively simple. We just wanna make sure everybody's coming for the right reasons and is excited to be there. I think that these are incredibly unique programs that, um, you know, students are drawn to because they really want to become a photographer or really become, um, you know, they want to get involved in wildlife conservation, but don't know what that's going to look like. And so we do find that most students that apply to travel on a National Geographic student travel program, you know, they're excited to get out there, get into the field, learn from experts, learn about what it might be like if they pursue a career in, you know, marine biology. They can talk to Tierney and find out what's that like, um, what drives you, how'd you get where you are. So, that's a long way of saying I feel that it's a relatively self-selecting group of students and we find that most students that apply do get in um, because uh, it, it is a good fit. Um, but we do want to make sure everybody is ready for, um, you know, the travel that's involved um, and, of course, being able to follow instructions, um, you know, when you're traveling, particularly when you're traveling abroad is, is really important. So um, that's why we do have those multiple pieces uh, of the application process. Perfect. And then there are just a couple of last questions that are specifically about the Baja program itself that maybe I can hop in and answer if that's okay. Please do. <laughs> Great. So um, the Baja program that Tierney is joining this summer uh, is actually one that I coordinate. My name's Mike. Uh, throughout the year, I have a lot of personal experience in Baja. Uh, the program flies in and out of Cabo in, in Baja Sur. We spend the majority of our time on a campus in La Ventana, uh, and that's right on the shores of the Gulf of California. It's where we have access to the water via kayaking and stand-up paddleboarding and boats with local captains. Uh, and that's kind of our launching point for all of our activities that Tierney mentions. Um, and then we spend a couple of days on the Pacific side taking surf lessons, uh, seeing a different kind of interior habitat uh, but there are a handful of questions about um, scuba diving on the program, which it is not a scuba focused program, but students that are at least basic open water certified before the program starts will have opportunities to dive on the program. For the most part, it's snorkel focused. You don't necessarily have to be uh, an expert snorkeler, but uh, we do want to make sure that students are comfortable in the water. Um, and the majority of the time we'll be out on the boats snorkeling, but there will be a few days where those students that are scuba certified 
uh, we'll go do some dives while the rest of the group uh, is snorkeling in the nearby vicinity. If you are not scuba certified, you are not missing out on any aspect of the program whatsoever. But we do not offer scuba certification on the program itself. You have to already be certified uh, before you join. And over the last couple of years, like less than half of the 22, 24 students on the on the program uh, are actually certified before the program starts. Um, and again, there's a question just about health and safety. Uh, Cabo is about an hour and a half, two hours away from La Ventana where we stay. And the city of La Paz is only about 45 minutes away, uh, which is where, um, you know, Western hospital facilities would be located. Um, but if you have any further questions about Baja itself, again, my name's Mike, you can give us a call. I'm happy to chat with any family further. And that's about it for the questions that are coming in from all of our attendees. Great. Well, um, wonderful. Well, we again, we will email this out to everybody if you'd like to share it um, out or review anything. But uh, as Mike said, give us a call anytime. Um, and we're happy to talk about any or all of our programs and see what might be a good fit for you this summer. So thank you again and have a good rest of your day.